Numbering sequences are used in center point fields where you want to store incremented numbers or character strings such as check numbers, invoice numbers, and bank deposit numbers. Numbering sequences are maintained under setup, general, and numbering sequences. There are a number of numbering sequences that are installed by center point. You'll want to visit each one to make sure it's behaving how you need it to. Today we're going to look at a couple of different ways that you could use a numbering sequence for payments. You can either click new to make a new one or you can edit an existing one. We're going to begin by editing payments and we're going to make two numbering sequences to be used in payments. One for printed checks. So we're going to call this PC checks or printed checks for the name. And in the uh, type of sequences, there are three different options. Transactions are the different entry screens that could have a numbering sequence. General are different areas of the program, such as fixed assets, where you might want to increment your assets as you purchase some, or allotted serialized inventory items, where you might want those numbered, different things like that. And the third option is for uh, vendor invoices. If you want to help avoid entering a duplicate statement from a vendor, this option, if you check the vendor invoice, um, would warn you if that particular vendor, if you entered a number that you've already used, it would come up and warn you in case a vendor sends you a second statement and you want to make sure and not enter that duplicate. We're going to go back to transactions. And this particular numbering sequence is going to be for payments, but we do payments in more than one screen. Uh, sometimes we write checks out of pay invoices due, sometimes out of payments, and sometimes payroll checks. So if you use the same checking account for paying employees, if you have center point payroll, as you do for the accounting checks, then you might want all three of these screens checked for one particular numbering sequence. And what that would mean is the number would increment regardless of what entry screen the transaction came from. And then over in the upper right is where we're going to format how we want this numbering sequence. If we click Format Help, it gives us a guide um, to the characters that you can use. If you want to increment with a date inserted, the lowercase m's, d's, and y's would do that. A pound sign increments an advancing number. A question mark increments an advancing alpha character. So in our particular checking account, we have four digits. So we're going to put four pound signs. That means that it will increment by four digit number. And then you have some different duplicate options. You can warn on duplicate, which would come up and warn you, um, but let you go on even if you decide you want that duplicate. Um, there's a duplicates allowed and that will not give you a warning or no duplicates allowed where you'll get a warning and it'll require that you change that number before you go on. And then you can also have a couple of different ways of when you want to be uh, checked for duplicates. And you can check for duplicates when saving the transaction, which is the option you would use uh, perhaps if you are a multi-user and more than one person is entering, in this case, payments at the same time. The first one that saved, the number would go through. If it, two machines came up with the same number, the second one would get a warning so that number could be changed. If this is a single use, then you might want the option of just checking for duplicates as you tab off the number field. And it would warn you and you can make your change. We'll go over this reset number that goes with a format that uses the date and we'll do that in a little bit. And then at the uh, lower right is a unique for each company and bank account. Um, the numbering sequence will manage keeping track of the numbering sequence for every combination of company and bank if these are checked. So you have multiple companies, you have multiple banks, every bank account would have a different numbering series and this would be able to track it. However, if you have multiple companies and they share the same physical bank account, then you may not want the checkbox for company. Or if you have 
multiple bank accounts in Centerpoint, but they really represent one physical bank account because you've made different bank accounts for different funds or departments, then you might want the bank account unchecked. After you have made these selections, we can go to the Detail tab and be able to enter the last sequence for each one of these combinations if, um, the, if that um, applies for this particular numbering sequence. So in the case of our uh, checking account, we could put in the last used number and we'll just put in two, three, four, five and tab. The duplicate search date is if you've been using um, uh, this numbering sequence for quite a long time, a number of years, and your numbering sequence started over, then you can change the search date to a, a date where you want it to begin searching for duplicates again. And if this is the default numbering sequence you want to automatically come up when you come into this particular screen, then you would check this box. And then the same options are for any of the other bank accounts that you have if they are going to be using this particular numbering sequence. When you're finished with that, you can click Save. And next we're gonna make, click New, and make another numbering sequence for payments, but this time the ACH payment. And we'll call it ACH payments. And we're gonna check payments again and pay invoices due but we're not gonna check payroll checks because we wouldn't do an ACH for payroll checks. They would, that would be a direct deposit if we were doing that in payroll. And then again, we can do our format. So this time in our format, we want all of the entries to begin with ACH. So that will be indicated when we go to reconcile with the bank where those came from. And remember on our guide, it'll be lowercase m, d's and y's if we wanna use the date on these. So we're going to put in MMDDYY. And then we also, in case there's duplicate ACH on the same day, we're going to put a dash and have it um, sequence that. So we have, <clears throat> excuse me, ACH, MMDDYY dash pound pound. And we'll see how that comes up in an entry in a little bit. Same duplicate options are available, duplicates allowed. Uh, worn on duplicates, and when to um, check for it. And this time we have our checkbox to reset number sequences on new date. So that means if I put in a transaction today and the first one was zero and the next one was one, and I put in a transaction tomorrow, it would reset it and put that transaction tomorrow start at zero again. And we are gonna check it to reset. In this particular sequence, because it's not really a real number that we're trying to match up to, we're gonna leave company and bank account unchecked. And then if we go to the details, um, we could put in our last use sequence here also, but there's not really a need to. You can also, your entry screen will update this field as you go along and it's gonna keep updating it every time you use the sequence to that particular checking account this is where it knows to grab the next one. So we're ready to click save. And now we'll see how these sequences work. We're gonna go over to our payment screen. And our company came up with our bank account and it filled in our sequence of printed checks because that's the one I marked as the default. And remember, we put in our last used number of 2345 it came up with the next number of 2346. If we change our sequence to the other one we made for HCH payments and click OK, this is how it's formatted. So it began it with our ACH characters that we put in our format, formatted the day for today, which was 092718, and put in the dash and the first number is zero. If I did an entry with this, uh, uh, sequence and I saved it, my next one would come up today with the same beginning but a dash one at the end and it would just keep incrementing. And that's how the numbering sequences will keep all of your numbers tracked in CenterPoint and you can have as many numbering sequences uh, throughout CenterPoint as you need.